With the additions of Germany's FIBA World Cup MVP Dennis Schroeder, Serbian mastermind rookie head coach Darko Rajakovic, lockdown defending late bloomer Jalen McDaniels, Larry Bird 2.0 Grady Dick, and all-time special college scorer Marquise Noel, the game will be different next year, and the Six will be back where they belong, near the top of the Eastern Conference, before detailing why that influx of talent, in addition to the cast already in place, will make the Raptors problematic again. Just 17.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so please help increase that number by pressing the sub box. Also leave a like for the YouTube algorithm, and for a follow back, follow at dflowhoops on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you for supporting my channel, back to the content. Based off the take you're about to hear from Raptor President Masai Ujiri, Toronto's management had a less than ideal relationship with the coaching staff last season. <laughs> I just saw Nick. When you see him and he says, good luck with those guys, you know, like, that's tough. The discontentment from Masai was for good reason. In the midst of a playoff race, Nurse was asked where his mind was entering a crucial game in Philly and validated rumors about leaving the team in the upcoming summer by reflecting on his decade-long run with the organization. As the Raptors fought for a position in the play-in, when asked about rumors regarding whether or not he'd be joining the Rockets in the summer, Nurse caught feelings about the line of questioning. I'm gonna, I'm not, that's exactly why I made it, was to not have to ask, ask, answer that question every game, because I got it about three games in a row. So let's move on and talk about tonight and this team and this season, please. As good as Nurse was defensively in the championship run with his box and one scheme, even when Kawhi and Kyle were two of his first three options, it wasn't Nick's playbook that was significantly instrumental on the success of the team. Offensively, Leonard, Siakam, and Lowry carried him in terms of shot creation and leadership. And last year, with Nurse having the services of MIP, two-time All-Star and second option on his championship roster, Pascal Siakam, another All-Star and champion in Fred Van Vliet, ROI and top positional defender Scotty Barnes, and six 13-plus point-per-game scores with those three along with OG Ananobi, Gary Trent Jr., and Jakob Pertl. The Raptors were middle of the pack in terms of both offensive and defensive rating last season and barely made the play-in. And a lot of that, quite frankly, should be blamed on poorly timed scheming, substitutions, and locker room motivation. A majority of playing defense comes down to effort and athleticism, which the Raptors have a lot of, but they stopped buying into Nick's system, and Nick stopped making accurately timed defensive adjustments with his one foot out the door. Overplaying the starters didn't help, but specifically after the incident where Nurse clashed heads with Siakam back in 2021, Spicy P visibly stopped respecting Nurse. This trickled down to the rest of the team, and a guy like Van Vliet got caught in the middle of it, Given it's a completely different situation this year, I expect a consistent season from Siakam with the guidance of a new coach. Pascal should be motivated with his former coach saying good luck with those guys on his way out. Siakam has become a superstar given he was one of five players last season next to Nikola Jokic, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Luka Doncic, and LeBron James to average 24 plus points, 7 plus boards, and 5 plus dimes. But his primary weakness has been performing in the clutch. The Raptors played 36 games with the score within 5 points and 5 minutes left, and Siakam wasn't even in the top 50 in scoring or even top 2 on his own team. In 128 clutch minutes, he scored just 63 points, made one of just 10 threes attempted, and converted just 36% of his overall field goals. Of course, Pascal has to take it upon himself to be more comfortable in late game scenarios, but Darko has to provide consistent encouragement for Pascal to get it done under pressure. Being fair to him, under Nurse, Siakam didn't have a head coach that was 100% in his corner. Ryakovich should make a profound impact on him in terms of instilling confidence and trust down the stretch. But the last five minutes of close games should be where Dennis Schroeder makes his biggest impact. Dennis hit massive jumpers to put Germany over the top in the World Cup and was effective down the stretch for LA last year. In a much lesser role than Siakam and four less clutch games than Siakam, Schroeder scored more points in that scenario than Siakam for LA. In 115 minutes of clutch time for the Lakers, Schroeder shot 52.6% from the field and was an NBA 10th best just behind Kevin Durant in plus minus. Siakam's plus minus in the clutch was 293rd best, tied with two of Schroeder's teammates from last season in LeBron and Russ. 
Being able to set screens for Dennis and play off him will be good for Pascal, and generally speaking, how the chemistry plays out between these two will either make or break the wraps in this upcoming season. It helps the chemistry that Dennis just stated one of the main reasons he signed with the Raptors was because of a previous bond with Toronto's new coach in Darko Ryakovich. Schroeder's first year in OKC in 2018-19 was Darko's last year as an assistant in OKC. For Darko, from being an assistant coach with three different teams in Phoenix, Memphis, and Oklahoma City, to at one point working under a champion in five different leagues overseas in Sasha Djordjevic, to borrowing plays from a Serbian national team that just made the finals of the World Cup, Ryakovic's first head coaching stint in Toronto should be a successful one. One of the biggest development projects for Darko will be the fourth overall pick from 2021. In my recent ranking of 10 breakout players, Scotty B made that list. David Aldridge of The Athletic agrees with that take, having also just predicted a breakout campaign for the Florida State Freak. Barnes was the highest scoring Raptor in the clutch last season, ahead of both Van Vliet and Siakam. He made 54% of his shots in that scenario. Barnes breaking out would take complete pressure off the likes of Ananobi, Trent Jr., and Pirtle, allowing those three to focus on being role players capable of stepping up on any given night rather than being solely relied upon. Someone who's going to help Scotty's floor space and stamina on the wing is 2023's 13th overall draft pick, Grady Dick. Dick will be one of, if not the most shocking rookies in the game if he can stay on the court defensively. That's why you could see him play a lot of minutes next to Barnes, given Scotty's strength as the defensive end. Not only do the two Raptor lottery picks give off similarly exuberant auras, but their weaknesses on the court can be made up for by the other. Scotty can help Grady on one end in terms of rotations and on-ball defense, Grady can help Scotty on the other when it comes to keeping the floor spaced. To watch the most recent video on Grady, I left a link in the description. Meanwhile, in the most recent video about free agent signing Jalen McDaniels, I mentioned his defensive rating was barely under the 24 minute qualification to be a ranked defender at his position. If Jalen was at 24 minutes played per game last year, he would have been 6th best among small forwards in defensive rating. Watch how he's laterally quick and attentive enough to press up on the right side of Desmond Bain, which forces him left, and he gets back to contest the off-handed layup. After allowing the O-board to Xavier Tillman, Jalen makes up for it by using his elite standing jump while going up vertically to avoid the foul call. Two-on-one fast break where he's the lone guy back sees Jalen anticipate the lob and snatch block it with one hand, forcing Jaron Jackson Jr. to put it on the deck. Jalen funnels Jaron into the low man help of Plumley, then throws the rebound off Triple J to gain possession. First navigating around the handoff screen from Brooks, McDaniels then fights through the on-ball from Adams, aggressively trails Bain, and times his jump to get a piece of the shot. Continuing to bother Bain, he fights through the cross screen of Steven Adams, gets caught jumping on the pump fake, but swiftly recovers by shuffling back to force the TO. Watch out for Jalen McDaniels. Then there's Marquise Noel, who, like McDaniels and Dick, I also made a separate upload breaking down. But there's a stat I wanted to mention that wasn't included in that upload. Marquise was the only player over the last 25 seasons to post a 5 game stretch of posting 20 plus points and 10 plus assists per game on 50 plus percent shooting from the field and 50 plus percent shooting from deep. So keep your eye out for a potential steal in the somehow undrafted Marquise. Where will the Raptors finish in the East in your opinion? I'm going to give a shout out to the answer I feel is best down below next video so leave your take, Dflo signing off.